welcome, one welcome, all welcome to another exciting presentation of the Sound Strategy Network, www.sound-strategy.net. I am Bridger, your host for today, also known as Adam Ruzzo. Today we are working on a little presentation of the rules uh, and some of the strategies in the card game Yomi, which is not currently in print yet. This is sort of a very alpha version of the digital version of the game. But as you can see, uh, each deck in Yomi consists of a standard 54 deck of cards, playing cards that you would use to play poker, etc. Um, but of course there are some very clear differences, which we will get to in a moment. Yomi is a game based on fighting fighting games from the console world. Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Soul Calibur, those types of games in which you try to outguess your opponent in split-second timing and, and, uh, and combinations of attacks and things like this. So Yomi is Japanese for reading, as in reading the mind of the opponent and trying to predict what they are about to do. Um, and Yomi works like this. Each player would take a deck, of which there are ten separate decks, one for each character in the game. This is Graves' deck, so he has uh, a different type of deck. He has more blocks than some of the other characters, but less of other things, and his blocks and attacks take on different forms uh, in the game mechanics. So it provides his deck with a very different play style compared to all the others, which is very interesting. So, here's how Yomi works in a nutshell. Both players pick a card from their hand, they play it face down. Then simultaneously, they reveal it, and we check to see who the winner is. As we determine who the winner is, the winner may get to uh, play some combos to do extra damage. After that, uh, everybody discards those cards uh, off of the table, and then they would draw one card, and we'd start all over again. That's the very basic shell of this game. Uh, so how do you determine who wins when you play a card? Well, as you'll notice, these cards can be played in two different ways much of the time that provide an actual different mechanical effect in the game. So when you play them, the, uh, the side facing your opponent is the side that you are actually choosing to play. There are essentially, a, it's, a three, uh, it's a rock, paper, scissors system in which attacks right here, the red ones, will beat uh, throws, the black ones here. Throws will beat both blocks and dodges Blocks and dodges both beat attacks. So blocks and dodges are essentially in the same... They're, blocks and dodges are scissors. And, uh, and attacks are paper and throws are rock. So you just got that nice thing there. I'll put up a little picture for you. And uh, that's the essence of the game. But it's not simply rock, paper, scissors. If it, that's all it was, it wouldn't be a very good game. Because there are very different payoffs for each of those. And you got to try and guess at any given moment what your opponent is going to be going for. So, let's take a look at the cards and see a little bit more about what they do. Uh, here's an example of an attack card. Uh, it has its damage over there on the right-hand side. The speed is located in a yellow box on the top. And the combo points that this card is worth is in the orange box in the center. The D in the uh, purple uh, arrow means that when you flip this card, it's a dodge. And you'll notice now that it has an A and an arrow. Just so uh, when you're looking at the card, if you had it in your hand... Uh, the text and everything would not flip in the same way uh, that it does here. Every, the text rotates correctly in the digital version. Unfortunately, it cannot rotate on the card in real life as you rotate it. So that's all that the D is there for. Speed is important because if two players both play an attack card at the same time or both play a throw card at the same time, uh, it turns out that only one of them can usually hit. The faster person wins. So lower speed means faster means you win the combat. So in this case, this attack card is a 4. It does 4 damage and its speed is 4.6. Now, this is a 3. Its speed is 3.6. This 10 is a 10.6. So you'll notice there's a very consistent uh, system. The lower numbered cards have less damage, but they are faster than the higher numbered cards. In addition, the .6 is basically this character's speed. Other characters might be 4.2 for their four cards. They're slightly faster than this character is a slightly slower character. So that's how uh, this system, that's what's what you see on the card here for attacks. Dodges are very simple. If you dodge somebody who's playing an attack, you can then hit back with any single attack or throw. There's no combo there, you just do one hit. So that's what dodge does. A block, when you block an attack, 
you get to draw a card and then return this block to your hand unless the opponent was able to uh, to throw you, in which case you've lost. So as long as you don't lose when you're blocking, you get the block back. So that's a way to improve the size of your hand is to block in order to get more cards. But of course, if you are very low on cards, your opponent knows that you will tend to block and they will try to play throws. And because you know that they know... Okay, I'm not going to get into that, but you get the idea. Now, the face cards, not in, uh, the face cards are special attacks. As you notice, they've got some cool, very cool special artwork uh, of the different characters, and they tend to be fairly quick. The queens are extremely quick. This is the one of the, basically the fastest attack in the game. It's a zero speed, and uh, they also um, do usually do block damage. The number in the little shield there, the two, just to the below the ten, means that even if you get, even if the opponent blocks when you attack with this dragon heart it means that they still take two damage. So the face cards are very powerful, and if you mess up with them and, and attack when the opponent blocks, well, you still get a little bit of damage going in four. So there you go on that. And uh, the aces are the super moves. So the only other thing you should take a look at on this ace is underneath the 45 damage, there are three aces. What that means is when you play this move, you have to discard an extra two more aces. This move costs three aces to play. But if you play on the other side, you could just play it and it does 12 damage instead of 45. So the goal of the game is to get your opponent down from their health to zero. And uh, with that, I think we can sort of jump in. All right, so let's take a look at an actual game. Uh, my opponent is playing Valerie, the Manic Painter. Uh, she has the ability to do combos out of order, which uh, is very powerful. She has sort of low power attacks, but she does a lot of them usually, because she has a max combo of six, which is the highest in the game. Uh, my character, Grave, has a special ability that when he blocks, he gets to do some cool stuff that uh, gets him to find a queen from his deck. So let us see what we can do about this. I'm going to start with a dodge to try and uh, get a little bit of extra damage into my opponent. So now we both played a card. We now reveal them. So he blocked and I dodged. Nothing really happens. We played the same kind of card. So mine is discarded. His block always goes back into his hand because I didn't defeat it with a throw. Now we go to the end of the turn and I get to draw a card. And now we go again. So let's see. I've got a three, five, seven. Hmm. I've got some special abilities on some of these cards. These are things that are unique to my character. I can discard this card to draw two cards, then discard a card, then the opponent reveals his hand. So I will play that special ability. So I can discard this card to draw two cards. So discarding this, draw two, then I have to discard one of them. I think I'm going to not discard one of them. I'm going to discard this ten. So now he reveals his hand. I'm going to view it. He's got a lot of dodges, blocks, and he's got an ace. i got to be careful of those aces. He only has the one throw. So now knowing what I know, I am going to attempt to throw a dodge in again in the hopes that he falls for it. Here we go. No, he played another block. So his hand is getting very large now, and I know what some of it is. I know he's got at least one ace in there. I can discard the effects of some other stuff. I've got a bunch of enders. Enders, if you can see at the top, says ender, means that uh, I cannot continue the combo once I play that card. If I played this five, it's worth one combo point out of a total of four that Grave has. So I could play the five, then I could play the six, then I could play the ace. That's what I'm going to attempt to do right now. I have a feeling that he's about to play an attack, though. So instead, I think I'm going to save that. I'm going to try blocking. Because he's blocked for two turns in a row, which means his hand is pretty big. He's got nine cards right now. I don't think he's going to block again. He did have a lot of dodges as well, but that would be the same as blocking. So here we go. All right, I did manage to block his attack, which means I take no damage because he doesn't have any block damage there. He loses that card. I get to draw a card, and I keep the block. So block is pretty powerful for getting new cards. And now it's the end of my turn, so I get to draw another card. Hmm. 
All right. So now I'm going to try to chain together a combo with this five attack. I don't want to throw my ace out there because if I miss with it, it would be pretty bad. All right. He do a throw. Attack beats a throw. So now he has the option of putting a card face down like he just did there. What that means is he may have a joker face